is Dr. Epstein. I'd like to talk about my approaches for partial and complete hairline excision versus individual graft removal in reparative hair restoration surgery. This lecture was originally presented in the annual meeting at Lisbon. I have no disclosures. We all know what natural hair transplants look like, natural recessions, feathered hairline. Another example, there's no skin scarring when hairline when hair transplantation is done properly, the results are quite aesthetic. However, what happens when they're not done aesthetically? And this is a nice example of, uh, you know, a natural appearing hairline, large grafts. So the most common approach to repairing these is with the performing of additional transplants. So we're able to basically create a, a new hairline, irregularity, and better density. And this is a before and after one year. When there's not enough donor hairs, we will rely on beard hairs. This was restored before and, and, and 10 months after, a restored with beard hair transplants. But what about when a patient presents with results from a prior procedure that I, has, mm -hmm. I, for example, a hairline that is too low or too flat, scarring in the area of the transplant, or on top of inadequate and or inappropriate density or unesthetic graft size or angulation or distribution? And this is where the reparative procedures of graft removal and hairline excision may be indicated. Example of a patient, unesthetic hairline transplanted elsewhere, uh, somewhat depleted donor area. And the decision was made in this patient because he said, I just want to reverse my transplant to do FUE regraft removal. And this is before and immediately after 1,300 removals. Um, and I'll explain my technique. Is basically the, the in technique of individual graft removal is done to address the challenges of the unnatural hairline position, inadequate density, unnatural appearance, and it's using a surgery which with, with which we are intimately familiar, FUE. The hairs that are removed can be retransplanted maybe into the donor area or further back into the scalp. And the general rules, two, million, two millimeter or larger punch will suture those clothes with a 4 or 5 nylon suture. If it, 1.5 millimeter or smaller, will allow it to heal by secondary intention. And the actual technique, which I call FUE graft removal, utilizes one millimeter or smaller punch. And this is a plug removal case before and after, used a three and four millimeter punches, and these were suture closed with 4 nylon before and 10 months after. This is a reprint from an illustration from uh, plastic and reconstructive surgery. On the bottom is the removal of the entire plug, suturing it closed. On the top is an illustration of a of FUE, or rather plug reduction, where I'm removing a portion of the plug to reduce its volume. So here's an example of FUE uh, graft removal. Patient presented um, too low of a hairline, and he desired a, a higher hairline. You can see the technique before and after 800 grafts FUE removal, and you can see every all the grafts below the line were removed, and how nice his healing was. And the result is a higher, more appropriate hairline, free from anesthetic, large misplaced graft. Another example, patient in this case had two rounded of a hairline. You can see the before, one day after, and three months after, how nice the healing is after removal of 1,200 graft. And the technique, we usually use a 0.85 millimeter punch. You want to remove, remove a little of the hairs along with the cuff of surrounding skin. We like the WA FUE system. Postoperative, the air is kept moist with antibiotic ointment, and usually within five days, it's all healed up. So why not do laser hair removal? Well, the problems with laser hair removal is number one, you're, um, you're, it does not allow for recycling of the hairs. They're basically destroyed. Secondly, it can worsen rather than improve scalp scarring. You can see that sheeny look on a patient that had presented uh, after laser hair removal uh, to attempt to remove a too lower a transplanted hairline, and he's really unhappy with the appearance of the skin. One more example, FUE graft removal of 900 grafts before and four months after. Let me talk about the technique of partial hairline excision. This patient presented, was unhappy with his prior transplant, went to a surgeon who attempted to do uh, plug removals, uh, was unhappy because all it did was cause more scarring. We wound up doing a partial hairline excision. These are usually done bilaterally. Uh, and there's also the technique of complete hairline excision, which I will explain. But you can see here with partial hairline excision, we're able to remove the, within the ellipse, not only the, the prior grass, but all the the scarred skin, leaving uh, a fine line scar, which if desired can be then transplanted. This is a, a relatively uh, small surgery. Uh, it's usually done under local anesthesia, maybe oral sedation. Uh, to close using utilizing 3 PDS for the deeper closure and 5 nylon for the skin. And uh, you can recycle the excised graft. And here's another example before and after. Patient developed iatrogenic cutis gyrata 
after extensive grafting immediately after, and then long-term after, significantly uh, improved. There's also the technique of complete hairline excision. And this is before eight months and immediately after and eight months after excise the complete hairline, including all the scarred skin. This is usually performed under general anesthesia. And there's um, removing all the skin with all the, hair, the hairline grafts, closure done trichophytically, and the grafts can be dissected out from the excised tissue for retransplanting. You have two options. If the goal is to bring the original ha hairline lower, or if you want a lower hairline, you can actually do a hairline lowering surgery. However, if in some cases where the patient desires uh, the hairline to be placed higher, we can actually tighten the forehead skin, sort of do like a, almost like a modified brow lift. And in any of these cases, after it heals, you can do grafting. You can see the results uh, the immediate, the one week after. This is an intraoperative example, how the hairline top right, the hairline's actually being advanced. And then I'm able to remove all that um, scarred prior transplanted skin. And you can see this patient before and then three months after. Another example before, immediately after, this was to address inadequate density from prior grafting. So this new hairline will have hairs uh, growing through it, through the scar. This is an example of a patient that wanted a higher hairline, so we actually tighten his forehead skin. You can see the reduction in his forehead wrinkles, minimal elevation of the brows. I was able to remove the entire plugged hairline. Uh, you can see uh, uh, immediately after, or one day after, the same patient, you can see um, the tightness, but that eventually softens. And then finally, for more extreme cases, uh, I use balloon expansion uh, to uh, expand the surrounding normal um, or bald scalp and forehead skin able to remove the five rows of plug grafts. Anyway, uh, another example, complete hairline excision with advancement. So I basically removed her prior tattoo um, and uh, with a, I was able to remove around 90% of that. And this is a case of patient had transplants uh, for F, with FFA, obviously unsuccessful. So we wound up doing a hairline lowering surgery, cutting out all the prior grafts. The technique of individual graft removal, it mainly is indications are to remove or re improve or, re or, Im or reverse a prior transplant, removing specific anesthetic grafts. The advantage is it's minimal surgery. The disadvantage is it, it requires several procedures to remove all hairs, and it also can add to scarring. Meanwhile, hairline excision, you're removing a part of or the entirety of a prior transplanted hairline. It gets rid of the scarring. It's a single stage. And you can also achieve a lower hairline with unsurpassed density. It's major disadvantage, a larger, larger surgery. Anyway, this is Dr. Epstein. I uh, hope uh, this was, lecture was felt to be worthwhile. Thank you.